Hey there, internet. Exclusively on my channel today, we're going to go from this to this. So let's go ahead and strip it down. I'll go through all the details of how I put this together so that if you uh, want to spend three years, you can make your own. So here's the star of the show. It's a 25 millimeter piece of linear rail rod. I have a little press fit end cap here. This is one by eight millimeter. And then uh, inside of here I have a double row angular contact bearing. Now the way that this needs to work is th this needs to be able to spin completely independently of the linear motion. So that's what this this uh, bearing arrangement does. Ideally I'd have a thrust washer in here uh, with a little spring to create a little bit of additional preload. This isn't a super super precision angular contact bearing but when I've had this set up on the machine I've measured it and there's about 0.1 millimeters of give if I if I if I try to move this linearly I think when the arm is moving in and out there's not that there's not quite that much heavy forces linearly on this so what I could you know I could uh, put put a thrust washer in there I've got these uh, these eight millimeter by, I don't know, that's about 12. They fit in there fine, uh, but it's pretty thick. And then I have these roller types, which are considerably thinner. The problem with these is I have to bore this hole out more. So I think I'm just gonna leave this the way it is for now. And then if I have any problems with it, I can always knock it back apart and uh, put the, the bearing and, and wave spring in there to give it the preload that it needs. So the only other thing I guess I'll point out is that I did turn both sides of this on the lathe because I want to be able to put an indicator on here and not have to get it exactly in the center. And that way I can measure exactly how much linear in out that I have. And this is just a press fit on here. Uh, it's a pretty tight fit. And uh, I have a block that sits on this end that when you, when you roll the screw, it'll do the linear motion. Okay, so we've got the way to get our linear, linear motion and rotary motion. So what we have here is uh, 25 by 38 millimeter, uh, very thin bearings. And they're sitting in a couple blocks. I think this, this distance is 45 and a half millimeters. So this is gonna give us a rotary motion here. And um, the only thing I really had to do here that was uh, I guess a little bit challenging was uh, in here is a split cotter which is a brass shim that presses onto the, the shaft and when I tighten this down it locks, it locks the shaft from rotating. I actually don't use this that much in practice uh, but for some things um, you need to have this here so th those two pieces are critical. You need to have these pieces uh, pretty accurate uh, so that this this is uh, this surface is maintained as you slide the the arm back and forth, and um, the one other thing that you need here is you need a way to stop the rotation so that the arm will whoops the arm will stop at a certain spot. So in order to do that, I went into the scrap box and got a couple different things. Um, obviously, this is uh, bored for 25 millimeters and just uh, crank this down to tighten it onto the actual shaft. And then for my depth adjustment, what I've done is I've used some silicon bronzing uh, brazier and I've put a, a ball bearing on the end of this. Uh, I think this is M5, uh, 0.8 millimeter pitch. So the way that that works is you just get to the position that you want, and if you want to adjust it, you just screw this in and out. So now that you've got all those components, the next thing you need to do is, is attach these to something uh, firm, and then you need a, a, a way to actually control the, the linear motion. Okay, so to attach this, uh, what I've got here is a, a 9.5 millimeter by 50 millimeter by, I don't know how long, by about 420 six millimeters doesn't have to be perfect and I've got this 
countersunk for these M5 screws. And then I've also got some holes here, which we'll talk about in a second. So I'm just gonna assemble this real quick. So let's go to the time lapse, I guess. Click. Now that we've got everything assembled, we can loosen this. So we get good rotation there. If we want to stop that and lock this on, we can adjust this. So we just give that a little quarter turn. We're good. So now we're good. Uh, we have linear motion. Okay. So now all we have to do is put some way to transfer this turning motion into the linear motion. For that, I have a handle for that, for the uh, screw here that's got a little flat that I can put this set screw on. And I made this block here uh, that's threaded for M8 by one. So due to whatever error, this thing is not quite lined up. And there's a little bit of a sticky spot. Got a little shim. So there we go. We've got our in out. We've got our linear motion. I need to attach these uh, this little bearing shield here. Um, so now that we've got all that, the next thing we need to do is mount this to another substrate where we have the spindle mounted. So let me go grab that, I'll be right back. So here we've got our spindle, oh, and this is a piece of, uh, I don't know how long it is, 460 millimeters by 30 millimeters. And I don't know what kind of stone that is, but it was 15 bucks, and I just cut the end off with a diamond blade, and then was able to drill some holes in this with a diamond saw. The dimension between the blocks is about 280 millimeters, and the block happens to be set back from the face, uh, I want to say about 40 millimeters. And the center of the grinder spindle right now is about 195 millimeters or ish. And then I think this dimension between the center of the spindle and the center of the shaft is around 60 millimeters. The spindle's from a Sieg micro mill, and it's got a Morse taper to, uh, Morse taper to collet, and uh, I'm using these little arbor adapters that I made from these blank Morse taper to things, and there's a draw bar on the back. And then I have a 250 watt brushless uh, motor here, and then this column, is about 60 millimeters by 40 millimeters by 265 millimeters. And there's a dovetail on this and I have a couple set screws and a gib and that actually allows me to move this whole thing up and down. So one of the things I had imagined being able to do with this is to have a, just have a purely linear, linear uh, slide ability that I can also mount to this granite plate. I haven't done that quite yet, but um, that that's the that's the long-term thinking so let me get this set up flipped over and uh, get this bolted to the other thing okay so for the feet I don't know I have found I have found these in my junk drawer I just uh, board this out so it'd be the right size to fit over these cap head screws. So here it is, fully assembled. Um, <clears throat> I did some modifications here. You won't be able to see it in this camera angle, but I put a thrust washer on the bottom of uh, 
this bolt that runs down through here. Uh, I put a hole in here. I actually mounted this in the lathe and put a hole in here so that this split five millimeters is the center of rotation uh, for, for the swivel here. And uh, I changed some of the washers out. So one of, the, one of the original ideas I had was to actually make a Morse Taper 2 adapter for this. And uh, I did actually make that. It worked okay. But I found these collets on AliExpress. I think it was eight for a set for like 80 bucks. I thought that was a good price. They turned out to be surprisingly accurate. And while I don't have all the sizes, one of the things that you can do is you, find, you buy yourself an, a decent ER32 or ER, this is an ER16 or ER8, doesn't really matter. And you can pop that into one of these collets. And then if you have the full collet set for the ER adapter, um, you just pop this in here. And uh, you lose a little bit of uh, distance here because of the shank of the collet, but you, you, what you gain is the accuracy of these ER collets for off sizes. So if I had to do, let's say, a three, you know, three and a half millimeter, whatever, um, these aren't quite as accurate for unless they're close to the nominal dimension. And so I can kind of gain that back here. So just wanted to point that out. If, if I would have been able to buy the coll the arm in, in 5C collets, I would have done that. But when I bought this, the uh, these were only available in this kind of this decal, decal style collet. You got your swivel motion, and if you want to feed it, you just crank the knob in and out. There's about, well, I'll measure it right now. There's about one inch of travel here. I could actually increase that by just boring it out for this nut. And um, as far as rigidity, it's, it's pretty rigid. Um, one thing we can just put a dial indicator on is to see how much end play we have. So let's just do that real quick and I'll demonstrate the, uh, how, how well this uh, angle of contact bearing works. So if I push on the end, I get about 0.5 millimeters and it goes right back to where it was. And if I push on the other end, about the same. So there's not really, there's not really any run out and uh, it, it flexes back to the original position. So I'm really, really, really pleased with that. So rotationally, we're getting like about two, two tenths, two one hundredths of a millimeter, which is about a half a thou. And that's all the way out here at the end. On the inside of the bearing, it's almost nothing. And if I push on it, we get some flexing up and down of about 0.1 millimeters. But when you're running the thing, I don't, I don't think you're really going to have much uh, downward force. We show the precision of the in-out feed. So this is the the accuracy. If I want to hit, uh, I, I'm having a hard time seeing because the camera's right where I want my eyes to be. But let's say I want to hit 30. And get right on 30, back it off to 10, go up to 40. So I've got pretty decent control over position in the, the linear mode. So I guess a few of you have come all the way along on this journey of three years of various different stuff when it was clamped to uh, different things and I had it hooked up to an old CNC uh, axis and the whole thing started out as clamps, uh, so I think it's come a long way. I'm pretty happy with the result. Uh, the arm, I actually have another one because they shipped me two because the first one looked like it got dragged down the runway when they shipped it out. So anyway, yeah, this is a great result, and uh, while it took some effort, uh, the only thing I ended up buying was the uh, this bar. I had everything else as far as uh, all the other parts. So there you go. Project uh, completed. Clamps gone. If you have any comments, you have any ideas, you have any ideas on how I can actually do this, uh, this additional axis, uh, I'm going to use some linear bearings, but if you have any ideas on how a good way to do that or to put a tool holder on here, uh, let me know down in the comments. I'm also going to redo the adapter I made for these, these flat plates uh, in case I want to freehand some stuff. 
So I'm just going to have to turn something and, and mount it to the same collet system. So I think this will be a combination D-bit grinder plus slow carbide grinder and I'll have a you know a fence that I can mount on here and then I'll have a linear action that I can mount on here. But hopefully it will end up pretty versatile but if you have other ideas leave them in the comments and thanks for watching.